Welcome. Today we'll show how to implement state management with native web components, with no frameworks, just best practices. We will code three files, the project view component, the task component, and the data layer, our data client object, DCO for short. The key pattern here is that views make async read-write calls to the data layer and update themselves on data event sent through a small pub sub layer. If you follow this pattern, you can scale your UI code to big app without a big framework. Okay, let's code. Let's clone the DOM native quick start, npm install, npm run watch, and we get our hello world with a hot reload. A quick side note, feel free to add a like, always appreciate it, and give any feedback or ask any questions, I will try to answer them all. So let's add our V project tag, which would be the container for our task, and let's place it in the V main global CSS. Here we'll just fix it at 40 REM height and 22 REM width. The best practice with CSS grid is to have the parents place the children and the children filling the space given. And we add our CSS red border, press save, and we get our red box. Okay, let's remove the border debug. Let's create our V project component, project view extend base HTML element, which in turn extend HTML element. In the constructor, we call super. We attach the shadow DOM, very simple, input and a section, which will contain the task. And we adopt the shadow CSS style sheet. In the shadow CSS, we add the host, CSS grid, first row height will be driven by the child height, the input tag, and the section filling the remaining space. We do a gap of 16 pixel, one REM, Add some simple style for the input. And the section, we use grid as well, 16 pixel gap, and start the layout from the top. Here we use grid for one dimensional layout to allow to use grid gap. We press save, and we get our V project component. If we browser inspect the element, we can see that the layout seems correct. Okay, so now time to add our data layer. We will follow the DCO pattern for data client object which is a client sibling of a backend DO pattern. In short, a DCO object is responsible to create, update, delete, and get a specific entity type and publish data events on data change via our pub sub layer. For example, here, the project view will call the task DCO create when the user press enter. The task DCO will create and store the new entity and trigger a data change event. And project view on the create data event will call the task DCO list to refresh its content. In this episode, we'll implement an in-memory mock DCO, but the key here is to be async and event-based from the get-go. And then later, the implementation can be swapped with a REST or GraphQL backend without changing the UI. Okay, so let's create our DCO TypeScript file. First, we have the DCO hub, which is a PubSub object. Then we define the class, and we're using generic here. Every entity will have an ID number. Then we have the entity name, the sequence number, and then the store. And for now, we're just going to use an in-memory map. Then we have the constructor, which just set the entity name, which will be task in our case. And the way we're going to use this class is, for example, here for task, we're going to define the task type first with ID and title and the favorite and the done flag. And then we create a constant, a task DCO, which will be used through the application. And then we create some mock data. So now back to the create method of the DCO mock. First, we increment the sequence number to get the ID. Then we create the data object that we set to the store. And then finally here, we do a deep clone, a fresh copy, and then we trigger the events on create. And then we return the value. Don't forget here, this method is async. So the return value will be actually a promise of entity. Okay, so let's look at the list now. Very simple, we just do a fresh copy of the values from the store and we reverse it to order it by most recent. Obviously that will be an argument order by from the list method. Back in our project view component, we can now implement our refresh. The best practice is to define the key elements this component will be using as properties. Here's a section and the input. In the constructor, we just do a simple children enumeration, which avoids a DOM query. 
we create the async refresh method, get the list of tasks from the task DCO, create the document fragment. For now, just set the title as a text content and then refresh the content section. Now in the post display, which is called by base HTML element on the first pint after the connected callback, we call refresh. Press save and we get our first pass at the content. Since the C task tag hasn't been defined yet, it just behaves as a regular div. So let's create our task component. The shadow DOM will have three HTML elements. We just keep the reference of the first two. The ICO will be styled from the CSS states. And here's a cool TypeScript trick. We augment the global tag namespace with this new tag to match the runtime. This way, when we call document.create element, we will get the right component type. Now let's implement the data interface for this component. The best practice for item components, components that are displayed in a list or table, is to make them as stateless as possible. They just consume the data for display and just keep the data ID for reference. Here we have the set data method, which captures the data ID and refresh the component and return the self object for chaining. Then we implement a getter for the data ID and the data type. Now we can implement the refresh. First, we extract the data properties, set the title as a text content, the checkbox state from the done value, and then set the CSS class states for favorites and done. Now we need to change our V project refresh to call our task component set data. Here we can see that our tag name typing is working nicely. Then back to our C task, press save, and we get our content. Now let's take care of the shadow CSS. We add the host CSS grid with three elements, the checkbox, the title, and the favorite icons. We style the checkbox, the title, and the icon elements. And we add the state styles, which will be set at the host level. Press save, and voila, we got style and we got content. Obviously, if we enter a new task and press enter, nothing happened because the project view does not have any logic yet. Let's go back to the project view and add the event handling there. Here, the onEvent type script decorator binds the key up on the shadow root and use native event bubbling to catch up the event. The best practice is to use event bubbling when possible, as it reduces event binding points, which increase performance and significantly reduce DOM management complexity. For example, here we do not really care about how the input tag got created or even how deep it is in the tree. We can just listen to its events. So on the key up of the input, if the key matches enter, we get the title from the input value. We call the task DCO create with the title property. And then without waiting for the response, we reset the input element. It is very important that we do not refresh the list of tasks here. The key to make the code scale is that UIs refresh themselves on data event, not on UI interaction. So to bind the data events, we bind on the DCO hub we created before and listen to the task topic. Here, we use the on DCO hub decorator, which will do the binding and will unbind if the component gets disconnected from the DOM so that we do not have any memory leak. So on the task data event, we just call the refresh method we implemented earlier. We press save, type new task, press enter, and the UI gets refreshed. So now let's implement the C task user interaction. When the user click on the favorite icon, we need to update the data and refresh the component. There are two different approaches. The first, the most common one, is to treat all components equal and have the C task component read write to the data layer, listen to the data events, and update itself. There are two major issues with this approach. First, the C tax components have to become too smart. They have to know too much about the system, which now makes them heavier than needed. And the second issue is that we created ourselves an order of magnitude problem with all of those bindings, which will impact performance as the application grows and require the underlying system to be more complex than it has to be. And unfortunately, most of the template-based frameworks like Angular, React, and Vue.js make this approach extremely easy. And so a lot of developers default to it. But making something easy 
doesn't make it right. So the alternative approach is to keep the item components here the C task as light as possible, making them UI only components, meaning they only know how to display a data structure and trigger state change custom events on user interactions, and give the view components here the V project the responsibility to access the data layer, get the data events, and then update the sub components. This responsibility segmentation allows to avoid complexity explosion, which in turn makes the system scale much better. And the great news here is that we can use the native DOM event model to bubble those events up to the parent view components so that the task component does not even need to know its parents to be able to communicate with it. And this is when DOM becomes the new smart. Okay, let's go back to the code, go to the DCO to add the update method. First, we add a simple get method, always return a fresh copy to avoid original data tampering. And then we define our update method, which takes a partial task object, meaning that it can contain only some properties. First, we do some checks of the arguments and then update the stored data with the properties given. And finally, we trigger the event with a fresh copy, and then we return the value as well. Then in the task component, we add the UI state change, UI events that will bubble up to the project view. First, we add the click events on ICO, which will trigger the custom change event for the favorite flag. And then we do the same for the checkbox, which will trigger the change for the done flag. Here we use the click event on the checkbox because pointer up on checkbox gives the value before the click of the checkbox, which is not what we want. And finally, in the project view, we listen to the C task custom events and call the DCO update we just coded. Also, we do not want to update the UI here as we follow the pattern to change the UI on the data event, which we already coded in the project view. We press save, and now we can click on the icon and the states get changed. And we can obviously add a new task and interact with the new task as well. The key value of this approach is to be able to switch the DCO implementation to a REST or a GraphQL backend without changing the UI code, and all of that without any big framework. And this is because we built our code to be async and event-driven from the get-go. Now we can push even a little bit further and update only the C task that has been updated. So first let's add the JavaScript getter, which will return the list of task components. The best practice is to use JavaScript getter for key elements of the component. This allows to be dynamic, fully typed, thanks to TypeScript, and hide the internal component structure from the rest of the component code. Then we are going to upgrade our refresh method to take the optional task argument. If we have a task argument, we will look for the task element matching the ID and we will call the set data on it. And if we don't have any task as argument, we refresh the whole list as we had before. Then on the DCO event, we pass the data when we have an update data event. Press save, and now we can add a new task, which will refresh the list, and interact with the task element, which will update them in place, allowing for fancy transition and progressive updates. Okay, that was a pretty long episode, but it showed key patterns to scale your web UI code to big app without big frameworks. My recommendation is to always favor best practices over frameworks on your code design from the start, and your code will scale much better for much longer. Feedback and questions are more than welcome. Feel free to add a like, it always helps a lot. And subscribe if you want to get more episodes of how to write big apps with simple code. You can find the GitHub links for the quick start and the source code of this episode in the description below. And until next time, have a good one.